the black Hispanics and Native Americans, so-called, you are the children of the Most High God. That's right. What's before you when you repent is the kingdom of heaven. Right. Rulership, you no longer have to live check to check. You no longer have to take a bus. You no longer have to hustle to get, get by, get ends meet. Right. You understand that? You no longer have to do those things. You're not alone. You can get past the things that you go through. Right. A lot of things that you go through, right? We all come from that. We all go through things. Right. When you're by yourself, though, you can't get the help and the encouragement that you need right. in order to fight through it. You understand? Get that Corinthians 10 and 13. Yes, sir. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Bring it out. They have no temptation uh -huh. taking you, but such as is common to man. So the most High God is telling me what you're going through, there's no temptation that is that you're going through that is not common unto man. A lot of us lost parents. Right. A lot of us have been been down low. A lot of us have been in prison. A lot of us have, have been broke, homeless. All those things we've been through. Bring it up. A lot of us have been strung out on drugs. Read that again for the top, though. There have no temptation uh -huh. taking you, but such as is common to man. Your first understanding is it can't be that person that, that walks around talking about, oh, nobody knows what I deal with. Right. Or, or that you make your issues bigger than everybody else's issues. Because what you're going through, trust me, someone else is in an even worse predicament than you. Right. right. You understand that? So it says there's no temptation taking you at what is such common to man, but read on. But God is faithful. But the Most High God is faithful. Once you learn that you're an Israelite and you know who your God is, the God that looks just like you, not, right. not this, this guy right here, the God that's written up in the Bible that was only written to the Israelites to look just like you, he says God is what? But God is faithful. God is faithful doing what? Who will not suffer you? to be tempted above that ye are able. The Most High knows what you can handle. That's why he may put some of us through predict crazy predicaments. Mother was a crackhead. Right. Out on the streets. Right. Jacked up. But you still hear this word of the Lord, right? Right. As he says he's not going to make, make you suffer something that you're not able to handle. Read, right, but he gave you a way free. But what with the temptation? With that same temptation, watch what he's going to do, which the Most High did for every single one of us up here. Right. You're not looking at the average man that you see in a Christian church faking life, faking it out there. We come from what you come from. We grew up and some of us still live in the same ghetto, same slums, hustle, sold dope, did dope, dealt with hookers, all type of things like that. Right. We come from the same mud that you all come from. But the most we understand this here, read up on the top, 13 again. There have no temptation taken you, uh -huh. but such as is common to man. But so there's nothing that any of us go through that hasn't happened before and that your brothers and sisters are not dealing with now. Read. But God is faithful. But he's saying to God, once you start understanding that, you, that you're the Israelites and you come back to keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments, you'll realize that your God is faithful. Read. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that? Ye are able. Of what you can handle. Now here's the issue. How do we get over those things? How do we how do we fight the issues? How do we get rid of the a lot of us suffer from trauma or depression? How do we get that off of our minds now? How do we deal with that? Get Philippians 3. 3 and 13, I believe. Get 3 and 13. Because this is why our people are here. You mentioned that you send up prayers by yourself and things of that nature. There's a more powerful prayer that can be sent up. How you doing, bro? All right. What's your name? Greg. 
Rick, you go through, you got, you got issues, Rick. You go through problems. Oh, oh you got a yeah. hard life, Rick. Oh yeah, that's rough. Right, what we're going over now is how do we overcome that? And part of that, like the officer was bringing out, is first you got to gather together with your brothers and sisters. Right. And you got to get and come under the structure of the Most High God. Read that's that. Right. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Bring it out. Some of the things that's written in the Bible that our people don't know, so we don't apply it, and we can't get over the things. We got sisters that, that have been raped before, and now they don't know how to deal with a man, get in a relationship with a man, because all they know is that that trauma that they've been through, whether they were young or old. Right. Right, they got it. But the Most High God says he's faithful, and he made a way for you to escape, as long as you submit to his word and understand what he's doing for you. That's right. right. Read that. Brother, I count not myself. To be to have apprehended, right? But this one thing I do. So Paul is saying this one thing that I do. That every single what's your name? Yeah. Melvin, what's your name? Andre. Andre, what's your name? Ray. Ray. Melvin, Andre, and Ray. This one thing that Paul says he does in order to keep pushing in this movement and to keep pushing his walk and let life go. Let I mean keep moving on with his life. Read. But this one thing I do. Go ahead. Forgetting those things which are behind. You forget those things which are behind you. Yes, your mother passed away. Yes, you may have grew up in an orphanage. Yes, all those things. Guess what? All those things happen to everybody. Right. You got to let that stuff go, though. You got to let that go. Or it's going to weigh on you. Right? That's right. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Before is what the officer was bringing out. You know that you Israelites, the black Hispanics and Native Americans, so-called, you are the children of the Most High God. That's right. was before you when you repent is the kingdom of heaven. Right. Rulership, you no longer have to live check to check. You no longer have to take a bus. You no longer have to hustle to get, get by, get ends me. Right. You understand that? You no longer have to do those things. You're not alone. You can get past the things that you go through. Right. You understand that? Read that again. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, Go ahead. but this one thing I do, mm. forgetting those things which are behind. You forget the things that happen to you. You become a new creature when you come into this walk and really start walking, read. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Go ahead. I press toward the mark. You gotta start pressing towards the mark now. And these marks is gonna be obstacles. It's not gonna be an easy walk. We all, we can sit here and, and look at you and be like, oh, you, you smoke, you think you do drugs and things. Guess what? We used to do the same thing. Right. right. I used to smoke weed. I used to smoke, smoke cigarettes. All those things. So it's not easy. You just don't get rid of that thing. You get tempted sometimes. Sometimes, you know what I mean? You ain't smoking years, but you go through a situation or you may smell, smell a herb and things of that nature. The first thing you do is grab something, put it to your mouth or something like that. Right. But you fight that thing. Now it's time to start fighting those things. It's not about succumbing to it. It's going to be a fight for the rest of your life in this walk here until Christ returns. That's right. right. Read. I press toward the mark uh -huh. for the prize of the high calling. For the prize of the high calling. Read. Of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we press towards. That's what we got to start pressing towards. The Most High made a way for us to escape, and that's following what's written in this book. Get James 5 and 15, dealing with the prayers now. We're going to show you how your prayers can actually get better, not by yourself. The Most High has a divine order. So guess what? You may be new in this walk here. You have men over you. There's leadership. There's structure. That's what the Christian church is supposed to be for. Right. right. All this crime, all this depression, all this, this trauma that our people are going through, they're supposed to be able to walk into the Christian church and say, yo, I have a problem. Help me according to the scriptures on how to deal with that. Help build me up so that I can keep fighting. They tell you, come as you are. I'm not going to judge you. Go ahead and stay in sin. Though. Right. That's not how this thing works. Read that. Read the importance of having an elder over you. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Sure. My familia is the twelve. Is any sick among you? So now James asks, if any is sick among you, read. Let him call for the elders of the church. How can you call for the elders of the church if you're by yourself? 
how can you call for the elders of the church if you're alone? And you're right doing now. this walk, that's not, that's two are better than one, right? Part of that two is the elders of the church is there for you. Right. There's structure in these things, read. And let them pray over him. And let them do what? And let them pray over him. No, let him pray by himself and try to figure it out for himself. Read that again. Let them pray over him. You got to ask for prayer from the elders. Hey, right. pray for me, brothers. I need prayers right now. You understand? Because the most I may be dealing with that man on a higher level than you. And the most I may hear that man before he hears you. Right. But you, it's power in that. Read, he's going to tell you. Read. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And they anoint you with those that are sick, whether it's mentally, physically, our people, a lot of our people are sick spiritually. Right. Right. You understand that? A lot of our people are sick spiritually and they need that help. He says, anointing you with oil and doing what? Read. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The prayer of faith shall do what? Shall save the sick. The prayer of faith from those elders shall save the sick. That's what your elders are for. That's what, but when our people sit there, we send up prayers and we send them up. Hey Lord, please help me. You got nobody, you got nobody there with you to help lift you up, to encourage you to keep pushing forward or to pray for you. Right, right. Read. And the Lord shall raise him up. And the Lord shall raise him up. Read. And if he have committed sins. And if he have committed what? And, and if he have committed sins. If he has smoked cigarettes, read it again. If he had did what? And if he have committed sins. If you committed adultery, read it again. And if he have committed sins. If he, if he committed whoredom, if he smoked drugs, not following the dress code, if he committed sins, because sins is what leads to those things that we right. go through. All of our people are sick and got all kind of lung cancer, kidney problems, gout, um, damn, diabetes and all those things. And those are a direct result from sin. Right. right? Repenting from your sins will help fix our community. Hold on. He said, if he had committed sin, do what? And if he have committed sins, Go ahead. they shall be forgiven of him. They shall be forgiven of him. Hold on. Satan doesn't want y'all brothers to hear this thing. Hold on. Satan doesn't want y'all brothers to hear this thing, so they send distractions. You understand that? And it says, if he have committed sin, do what? And if he have committed sin, Go ahead. they shall be forgiven him. Read. Confess your faults one to another. Uh -huh. And pray one for another. So how can you confess your fault one to another and pray one for another if you're doing it by yourself? Right. These are the godly instructions that'll help fix our community, help fix our brothers and sisters. You can't do it alone. We're commanded to pray one to another and to confess our faults one to another. Hey, bro, I'm struggling with this. And then you go and get help for that thing. Read. That ye may be healed. That you may be what? That ye may be healed. So that them problems would go away. That depression would be healed. That that sickness would be healed. We have brothers just, just making over high blood pressure because they changed their diet and started victim following the Most High's dietary law. Right. Get that in Sirach chapter 39 and 28. You'll fall into the hand of the physician. Read that. Sirach chapter 38, verse 15. He that sinneth before his maker. So this is what our people don't understand. We just read that sin is a direct cause of a lot of the things that we go through. And it says, he that sinned before his maker does what? Let him fall into the hand of the physician. Let him fall into the hand of the physician. That's why our people need a doctor today. Right. That's why our, our people are suffering from lung cancer and dying from high blood pressure at young ages and things of that nature. Because we don't follow the laws that we think is basic. Oh, I can smoke a cigarette. Bro, you said you smoke, right? Bro, you said you smoke? Bro, you said you smoke, right? He's read that again. He that sinneth before his maker. It says he that sinneth. Smoking is a sin. You're defiling the temple of God. Read. Right. Let him fall into the hand of a physician. You're going to have to deal with a doctor. Why would you want that? What is sin? What is sin? We heard sin too in two scriptures. What is sin though? Huh? Oh, oh. Evil oh. thoughts. What's sin? What's the definition of sin? Even you thinking about messing with this woman. That's the definition. Look. What's the definition of sin? Do our people know what sin is? What is sin, brother? Something against the law of God. That, he, he's the closest. In 1 John 3 and 4. But with those examples, those are examples of sin. Right. Right? Read. Because they tell us that we can't keep the commandments. And that God's laws is done away with. Why do you think that your oppressor teaches you that? So that you can remain in a destroyed state, brothers. Right. We must come back and, and resist sin. Get away from sin. Read what sin is. 
First John chapter 3, verse 4. Bring it on! Whosoever committed sin. It says whosoever committed sin does what? Transgresseth also the law. You transgress the laws of God. You go against God's laws. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of God's laws. The brother mentioned fringes earlier. Fringes is to protect you from your sin. Right. right. Is basically, you know that smoking cigarettes is a sin. You be like, damn, I got my fringes on. It makes you, it reminds you of that so that you don't break God's laws. Right. To keep you away from the position. You understand that? To help you build a family. Create different things in our community that our community is lacking. Do y'all understand that? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.